Hey YouTube, Ben here with the 60 gallon cichlid tank posting a little update and uh, once again I've uh, done a little rearranging here in the tank always mixing things up but I think I'm going to be keeping this little uh, window here on this rock because this uh, my yellow lab here is just too uh, too cute the way he looks out that window in the rock and I'm just gonna keep that there because uh, he seems to have made it his own I want to talk about some of the fish I normally don't talk about you know, I do have some Mabuna in the tank and uh, you know they seem to get along fine with the peacocks I think because the peacocks are a little bit larger these Mabunas are um, of course including the yellow the yellow down there but this guy here I think it's a male. I mean, he's got some nice egg spots. Maybe you know. Maybe you can tell me by looking at him. But I think it's a male. I got this guy up here. He's a good looking fish. He can go pretty dark sometimes. Go pretty dark blue. And I've got the this one back here. Yeah. That's a good looking fish. Maybe you know what that is. He's getting some yellow in the tail there. One of the things I like about Mabunas is that they seem to color up really young. And it doesn't seem to matter if it's a male or a female. You get a nice colorful fish. So, um, unlike peacocks where you, when you buy them young, you sort of roll the dice. And uh, you might end up with a fish that stays gray and ends up being a female, even though this one I think is a male. But um, but you don't know really until uh, some time has passed. And uh, but with these mabunas, you get you get some color right off the bat, and uh, and they're they're pretty good looking fish, I think. At some point in my uh, in my cichlid in my cichlid uh, career here, I'll probably end up having a tank that is exclusively mabuna because uh, I'd sure love to have a few more of them. Uh, they sure are good looking. Um, here's my little front. Um, don't talk about him much, but he's a beautiful little fish. He's young, as you can see. He's got a lot of nice blue on him. And, uh, oh, Mabuno just took a little nip out. Um, gets along fine. You can see by looking at his fins, nobody really messes with him. His name is Eeyore, and uh, here's a young Fusco. This guy's been growing about a maybe a quarter to a half inch every uh, every few days. <laughs> He's growing really fast. He's probably going to be the reason I end up with a bigger tank. Him or maybe the. Uh, Maybe the Malawi trout, who's over at the back of the tank right now. He was sold to me as a male. Not sure how they could tell so young. Maybe they uh, can check out the tubes. I guess they call that venting or something like that. But maybe they check that out. But uh, there's the Bicolor 500 doing great. And some of the other usual stars of the tank. The um, clown luchas love it in here. They do great. They certainly love hanging out together. I certainly recommend uh, what you've no doubt heard before. Definitely get them in threes or more because they certainly like hanging out. Here's my uh, OB, one of the first cichlids I ever purchased, and he has certainly uh, developed into a, into a beauty. So just want to keep a little update. I've um, I make it a point when I stack the rocks to create a lot of a lot of nooks and places where the fish can uh, 
get in and explore and hide uh, the uh, rusty, which sometimes you see out and about. The rusty loves to stay in the rocks and hidden and uh, comes out every now and then. But I just make it a point of really stacking and creating lots of caves and uh, areas that they can get into. Um, in this particular rockscape that I did, I did it all pretty much to the right of the tank and to the left, I just left it pretty much just with the plant. I ordered a dark green plant that will be coming in off of eBay. Here's the uh, Redfin Borlei. He was uh, pretty, uh, pretty, got pretty beaten up. I put him in a different tank for a while and he's recovering. Um, I don't know why the the Vanessus just uh, d doesn't like him. And uh, Bucanono. I'm thinking that Bucanono is a male. I'm hoping. He's definitely pretty. He has some great yellow on the bottom of his fins. There's the electric blue. He used to be the tank boss. Kind of gave it up. The German Red's been asserting himself a little bit. Trying to be the tank boss, I think. Now that the uh, Benusis is uh, is going to be uh, rehomed, and uh, he's up here packaged and ready for uh, delivery. And uh, he's asserting himself. Definitely a beautiful fish, as you can see. I don't talk much about this dolphin, but I, I really like this dolphin. He's a Picked him up when he was very small. And uh, I'll tell you, the dolphins, they grow real slow. Just something to keep in mind. If they're like mine, they grow real, real slow. Unlike uh, uh, the Venusas, who went from maybe a half inch to five inches in about, <laughs> about a year. There's the trout. I also have an SP44 in here. He's from a different lake. He's, uh, I don't talk about him much. He's back there. He's real pretty when he spreads his fins out. I should probably get a few more of them. This albino is an interesting guy. I think he might have a little bit of dragon blood in him. He tends to be a little ornery. They tend to act a little extra ornery when I'm filming because they think it's feeding time. This yellow tail over here, this uh, this Mabuna here, this yellow tail, very pretty. He can go black sometimes, very deep blue, sometimes light blue. He'll change colors on me. And like the lab, he's very peaceful. Doesn't really bother anybody. Just kind of keeps to his own. So, <clears throat> Well, there go my beagles. They must see something. So um, there you go. Just want to give a little update here. And uh, the tank is doing great. Looking forward to, uh, to the Super Bowl. And uh, Cam Newton's going to be a ham handful. Um, Denver could do the upset. But we'll see. Good luck to both teams. And uh, thank you all for watching and subscribing and uh, certainly rating and commenting. I do read your comments. They are important to me. I do take things to heart. And uh, thanks for stopping by. That's all for now. And uh, keep enjoying the hobby. I certainly do. Well, one last comment before we uh, end off. Somebody delivered a picture to me, and it was packed in a couple layers of this stuff right here. This is like egg crate foam. Egg crate shaped foam. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up and form it into the shape of the uh, Sun Sun 302 filters, uh, filter media, and I'm going to use it at the bottom, on the bottom tray, with the points facing down and what that does what that does is it just gives you a lot of surface area 
I mean, think about it, all the raises, you know, the raised areas and the lowered areas. So that gives you a tremendous, a lot of surface area to capture, um, capture all the debris. So this uh, is going to be going into my Sun Sun 302. Just a little added bonus on a picture that was uh, delivered to me. And it just happened to be packed in some material that I was planning on going out and buying anyway. Just an egg crate type foam. And uh, so this will be facing downward, smooth side up. And this will be my, my coarse bottom layer of my coarse, my coarse filter. And then I'll have a medium. And then, of course, a fine or a polyfill above that. And then we'll get into the biological above that, like I normally stack my, uh, my Sun Suns with the Paragen in there. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And, uh, and thank you so much for stopping by.